Hello, my name is Liz Gwither and I'm talking to you from Washington DC from the board meeting of the Worldwide Hospice Palliative Care Alliance where I've just accepted the position of chairperson from the outgoing chair, David Prail. I would first like to acknowledge the work that David Prail and Cynthia Goh, the immediate co-past co-chairs, have done in establishing WHBCA as the world leader in extending the reach of hospice and palliative care. David has been an inspirational leader in hospice and palliative care and his vision in conceiving of and bringing to fruition this organization and his vision in establishing eHospice have been truly inspirational for hospice and palliative care worldwide. Cynthia Goh is also an international leader in palliative care and is respected in oncology and pain management organizations worldwide. She has worked tirelessly, not only in the Asia Pacific region, but also for WHPCA, for palliative care worldwide. I myself have a particular interest in palliative care as a human right and will work to see this right realized worldwide Currently, palliative care appears to be a privilege rather than a right and is accessed by the fortunate few who are referred or find their way to hospice and palliative care services. In the last few months, under our official relations with the World Health Organization, we have been working to support the WHO with the implementation of the palliative care resolution, strengthening of palliative care as a component of integrated treatment within the continuum of care. Six of our board members and staff are contributing to the WHO Technical Advisory Group on Palliative and Long-Term Care. Stephen Connor has been engaged in developing manuals and tools to support the implementation of this resolution. In addition, Claire Morris represented our members as the first, at the first ever ministerial meeting on dementia in April, and Stephen represented our members at the first global coordinating mechanism on non-communicable non diseases, also in April. While we fully recognize the importance of this high level political engagement to raise understanding and awareness and influence policy and palliative care at all levels, we also know that these meetings and processes can feel far away from the reality on the ground where so many people living with life limiting conditions do not have access to the care that they need and our hospice and palliative care services are struggling to meet the demand to scale up effectively and to access funding. For this reason, in my role as chair, I am committed to a number of things. Firstly, I want to make sure that as we work with our partners, including the World Health Organization at the international level, that we ensure our global level policy work is not only understood and supported by our members, but that it generates outcomes which are of direct benefit to you in your own national advocacy and policy development. Ultimately, we will strive to see the impact of our global policy work on the ground through increased funding, increased education, and national policy changes. Secondly, we are committed to building World Hospice Palliative Care Day as a bigger and better campaigning opportunity for you all. The theme of World Day for 2015 is Hidden Lives, Hidden Patients, and we are working with the International Children's Palliative Care Network, recognizing that children are part of the hidden population with limited access to palliative care. We will also be paying focused attention to marginalized groups such as older people, migrants, refugees and displaced people, the LGBT community, people with disabilities and people in informal settlements and slums. We believe many groups are not accessing the palliative care services they need and we could do more. To have our doors open for all is not good enough. We need to make sure that we are reaching out and enabling access positively. Thirdly, I am committed to improving two-way communication with you, 
our members and to the support of our members. The work of WHPCA to improve access to palliative care and your work will be continuously reported through eHospice, our website, our social media channels and our newsletter which you will receive once every two months. WHPCA board and staff members will always be available via email to answer your questions or to give advice and support. Health inequities are a major point of discussion in many countries. Access to palliative care and pain treatment is one of the most striking examples of severe health inequity across continents, borders, population groups and disease groups. From homes to hospitals, from rural to urban areas, from the rich to the poor, people's access to palliative care is shockingly inequitable. From my first-hand experience, managing the Hospice Palliative Care Association of South Africa for the last eight years, I am more than aware of issues of equality and equity of access. I look forward to bringing the knowledge and experience I have gained in South Africa with regard to this access to palliative care to the global response. Please don't hesitate to contact me directly with your thoughts and ideas. As Chair of the Worldwide Hospice Palliative Care Alliance, I want to see WHPCA activities with our members result in a real change for people living with life-limiting or life-threatening illness and their carers wherever they live. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.